journey, and you are starting to realize what choices you have ahead. Every decision you make will shape your life and the person you become in ways that you can't predict. See tracks, think train. History. I'm your host, John Sakaguchi. Today I'm on location in about an hour and a half south of campus. I'm in Clarksburg, West Virginia uh, at the Locust Height 8 and Western Railroad. Well, as kids, when we play with trains, you think of the little old Thomas tank engine stuff, well, the little model trains. But what happens when your dad builds you a playhouse that looks like a train and then takes it a step further? Well, here at the Locust Heights and Western Railroad, and that's exactly what happened. And so, oh, come along for the journey. Get ready, ready to see something you have never seen before, or on a different kind of tour slide. And so, sit back, relax, and remember, all aboard. The Locust Heights and Western Railroad, just a little short line, a narrow gauge railroad. Located here in Clarksburg, West Virginia, originally built, built by Keith Mason, and the railroad operates on three-quarter mile track. The engine is owned and operated by friends and family of the Mason family, including Keith Mason's daughter, his wife, his grandson, and several of their friends. We arrived early on in the afternoon as the fire was being stoked in the boiler. We take a look around here of Climax engine number one. We see here, here the fire are burning nicely. You can hear er, as the pumps are starting to get kicked on. We see e, on the far side of the locomotive is the, the machine shop. The small little building in or, or diesel number two of the Locust Heights in Western. Or, Currently, we're we are here or, at the e main station, but was once once the sidetrack act for the solid mill. Building behind us, you see here. Here, er, er, with all the different tractors and steam engines, was once the equipment building for the sawmill. Oh. Well, before or we can hook up Climax number one uh, to the train, we got to get the log car out of the way. So. A hey, hops aboard engine number two, who then takes the little switcher er, out of the shed, hooks it up to the long car, er, and takes it off to the siding. As you can see here, er, that this is not a normal coupling unit, and with the knuckle old couplers, or er, as we have a pin system. Um, where the train will couple on. Thank you. 
before long, on the engineer train, he showed up and started prepping the engine. So let's go talk with Trey now oh, and find out all about how all Climax number one works. It actually had two gears and it had two speed, kind of like a transmission right. for the Class A, but there's nothing to strip out. Okay. So we, granddad, decided to go with the chain and sprocket and then went down, made the, it has the pillow bearings there that made the drive shafts and the gear boxes instead of being beveled open gears like you would see on a Shea or, right. or another Climax he did enclosed but they're differential okay? okay so we like for instance like if we can only sand we only have to sand one rail right makes it easier to recover from the spin off so it's actually a lot better than having a positive it makes it easier to not spin out and then the same goes that all wheels are driven when he first started it he just had the one the two gearboxes okay. going to the uh, inner two truck wheels on the trucks. Then after he revised it, he went on out and made eight wheels drive, and it, and it does real good. If you look, these trucks actually resemble the Climax they just got done up at Cass. Okay. If you've ever seen it, yes. if you look at pictures of it, those trucks are identical to it. You know, I've been trying to get down there to see it ever since it's, they re. I haven't seen it since they got done. Yeah, the last time I saw uh, it was the boiler was still under a tarp. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's all. That, that was probably the last I seen. In yeah. person. Yeah. It was just being a vertical. Some Class A's had a T boiler on. It. Okay. Okay. So that was kind of like a mixture between those. And then you had a, your flues actually went up through the sitting the horizontal part of it, and your stack was out the front. But earlier ones had just the straight vertical, which is actually a lot easier to work on. Like, there's no stables in it. Fair enough. So, we actually had the old inside of that boiler cut out uh, back in uh, 2016 and re welded in because it was just all messed up. The flu sheets in there, there's two flu sheets in it. It's about right here and about on the, and at the top of the boiler. Okay. That's where your tubes are, and the rest is your firebox. And, uh, the original, when the boiler was originally built, they wasn't put in square. Mm -hmm. The tubes were crooked. So eventually, over time, they started coming, working loose, and they started leaking. Uh oh, that's not so good. So we went in there and tried to get them to seal up by re rolling them and then beating them up, beating them back over. But it wasn't just because it was just one square, so we decided not to run. And that's why we had new flu sheets put in. Okay. And uh, ever since then, it's been, it, it, uh, it runs completely different. So much better. Doesn't leak. I haven't had problems. Of course, you know tubes wear out, boilers yep. wear out, but it's it's a lot better than it ever was when it was brand new. There's, this was the third boiler this engine's ever had. First brand new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, oh, look at. I've been in the cabs of different steam locomotives, even okay. in a couple full of the ones of cast. Uh, how does this one operate properly? Well, these I believe were on some sort of steamboat originally okay because these engines was always ganged together these, they're jf buyers of steam engine they's always ganged together so that was one hit one hit thing he had to figure out because that was one thing you know he couldn't make right he had to find the engines we debated on using one but found come across these and made it so had two and that's how it would have been on the class a originally too okay it had two engines centralized instead of how you normally see a class B or C climax right. where it's on the side. So, so we don't have steam turned onto it right now, but this is just your throttle valve right here. All right. That, that'd be shut off and then the more you give it. We usually only give it have to give it half throttle at the most sometimes. If, if you give it any more it's just gonna spin it. But, uh, we have two ways to put water in it. We have I have an injector back here with fireman has an injector and then we actually instead of using another injector we used a uh, worthington water steam water pump. Okay. Yeah. that's what you were working on, on earlier yeah i was filling the i was filling the filling the lubricators that's the hydrostatic lubricators for the engine and that one up there is for the water okay that just mixes the old steam and well, it lubricates the inside of your he, he got it. He then we just have waste boilers on the outside. We don't have any mechanical boilers or nothing like that. 
All right. They had another contraction there, and I think it was a band or something, and it had been converted to hydraulic. We have manual brakes on it. No air, no air, steam brakes. We just need manual brakes for it. Just need adjusting every now and then. Other than that, they do work. Yeah. Right. We're going to take it around right behind it today and see it up close and personal. It's it's not it's not not it's not much, but it's something. <laughs> Still, when I heard the story, it was one of those things. I was like, I have to go check this out. Yeah, it's and there's no there's only a hand there's only I think two or three actual Class A climaxes left. They they consider ours a, a you know it's not exactly a climax, but it, it is you know it's a, we call it a replica. But uh, there'll be a lot of the new river. But. When you look up a Class A Climax, by God, you'll see this one on there. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some similar to these. Yeah. I think they got one up in PA or somewhere. They're restoring one. And I think there's one over out west somewhere, too. But they're different. They the got one out west, I think, was out in Oregon, I saw. I think so. Yeah. Oh, I think right. The PA one, I'm going to have to do a little, little, uh, it a little comes, more They digging. got it from Alaska, I think, and brought it down or something. Like, I don't know. I hear so many stories from people. And, I never know. Can't keep them all straight. You don't know who's lying or who's going through. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot of fun. I've always wanted to build another locomotive, but just don't have the time to do it. <laughs> we probably one day if I get bored enough, I'll probably build a shack. But, you guys do. I'll probably be back down. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably one day have another one. There's nothing to it. I'm wearing a fall to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. You were doing a good job. But, uh, he always said he wanted yeah, to do it. He got yeah. Parkinson's to it. I had to just put a hold on everything. And there was a gray area from where he was not good enough to do a lot, and I was too young to do it. So a lot of stuff kind of. If you bring it up too fast, it just shocks everything. That's right. It's not, it's not good for it. That boiler grows, it'll grow about half inch. The bigger the boiler, the more it grows. Like the cast will grow like an inch and a half, too. Right. Without, you know, when there's pressure and no pressure. So just bring it up. Once it's hot, you usually bring it up pretty quick. Here in about five minutes, we'll probably get up there. So we, we pop the boiler's rated for 150. We have it set pop to 140. Well, thank you, Trip. No, no I appreciate it. No, I'm glad you got to come around. As you can hear, er, the engine getting ready, e, the uh, safety valve off, all of the blow off access pressure went off and scared everybody Eddie, around, on, including the, myself. First time I am here at the Locust Heights and Western, a schooling group was here for a field trip, and this is the first time that the railroad had ever been asked 
if they could do a teaching lesson into a school. So let's listen in here. Once that was the lesson was done, it was time to board the train. Being respectful, old Arian and I decided to let the, the school kids and their families go first, and we would join later on. Once loaded, Climax number one would, fall, would steam out of the yard and head off towards the flats, up a, a steep little grade, coming across the trussle, and go up a 4.5% grade into the woods and finally a stopping at the field. We'll talk more about the E's we, whenever we climb aboard. After a few minutes, it's up for a trip up to the fields. Train backs down to the station and for its second run. This time, Arian and I will be climbing aboard.
looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. Ron, this newcomer has no idea what he's getting himself into. Let's go to the action. Jim, the size difference alone is staggering. Unbelievable, Ron, and this guy acts like he doesn't have a care in the world. What is he thinking? Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think tracks. So we bought the train and everything. Now, Arian and I are going to go take a ride ourselves. However, I'm getting the first hand, hand view of the same view that the engineer and Aaron crew gets to see. So I'm going to climb in the cab up and take a look up front. And then Arian is going to take a ride in the caboose and see, see what the rest of us see. So sit back, relax. After Arian and I, I were situated in our respective of ends of the train, Arian in the caboose and myself up in the cab with the rest of the crew, we headed off for another trip up the fields. I do want to apologize to everybody that is riding along with here on the episode with us. I was warned that it was going to be a little bumpy. However, I didn't understand and what they meant as I nearly was bounced off the front of the locomotive. Once out of the yard, er, things went a little bit smoother as we roll into the flats. And we rolled to the flat ads, and as you can see up ahead is the trussel old that goes over top of the swamps. This trussel old, probably not much more than 30 foot long, crosses over a little swamp here or on the Locust Heights in Western. Just beyond that, you see the first road crossing of the trip.
After that, we followed up, up as we head up the grade. Now, oh, as we start to enter the woods, and you see the E bend, and it's starting to get a little bit dark out. start to climb the 4% grade. Maybe the engine starts to work a little bit harder as you hear it starting to, with a heavy train, start to chug a little bit harder now. As we climb up, up the 4% grade aid one last time, we want to cross the last crossing before we get to the end of the line. the end of the line yeah. literally the, the literal end of the line after we reach the end of the, of the line the crew took the time to grease over some of the running gears of the locomotive restoke the fire a little bit more and while we were up there we got this beautiful photo After a few minutes at the field, we'll be back down on what was going to be an easier run for the engine, but we would be running caboose first down the hill, which meant that the train crew would have to work with the hand brakes on the cars along with it, the brakes on the locomotive itself. At this point, it's starting to get a little dark, so a little bit harder for me to see up in the engine. However, Arian back in the caboose still could see a lot. <clears throat> it started getting a little too dark for me to film inside the cab. However, for Arian back in the caboose, she still was getting some beautiful shots of the West Virginia night and sky.
Once we reached down by the swamps, I was invited into the cab, and I joined in where the fireman would be sitting inside the cab. Well, oh, the fireman added more fuel to the fire, and I even got to ring the bell oh, as we entered the base station. If you look hard enough, you could see me uh, hanging my head out the cab uh, as if I was one of the actual crew members myself. We disembarked once we reached the base station, and the LH&W loaded up one more time, got more fuel oil in the fire, and added more water before making another trip up to the fields. As tonight was a little bit of a busier night for, for the LH&W. On normal night, they only run two trains, but however, tonight they ended up having to run four. On the fourth and final run, Ariana, I, as a joke, after she found this little plaque, it said, the conductor has the power to marry couples, but it's only lasting for the duration of the train ride. So just for fun and to mess with our friends and family, Ariana and I couldn't resist for a little joke. So for about 15 minutes, Ariana and I were technically married, but to our friends that didn't pay attention to the plaque, it was a joke that we could not resist. Once back down to the main station again, and we saw this picture with the LHNW number one and the beautiful old clear sky A's over West Virginia. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Rolling Through History. I want to thank everyone here at the Locust Heights and Western Railroad for everything. And from um, Trey, who showed us around the engine, to Tracy for helping us get everything set up. <laughs> so, oh, for more information or to learn how to donate, go to their Facebook page, Locust Heights and Western Railroad. There you can see their train schedule, pictures, videos, and much, much more. So, till next time, everyone, may all your signals be green, and I'll see you down the line. Take care, everyone. All aboard! on the tracks. It's not worth anyone's life to be on the train tracks. Every grade crossing and railroad related incident is preventable and it's preventable by people not being on the tracks in the first place.